Page 14 from a storybook. On this page we're learning a, a thing about fingering that's really, really, really important. You see, we have to figure out which fingers to use on which notes and sometimes the notes are just going all over everywhere. So how do you go about figuring out which fingers to use on which notes? Now so far on this level, you know, they give you the finger numbers so you don't have to figure it out, you just follow what they say. Although I change the fingerings quite a bit on these books, these method books I've done because I think I have a better fingering and I'd like you to learn that. See, there's different fingering styles. There's different ways of fingering things. Some teachers teach different ways. I learn different ways. But the one I use now and the one I teach is the one that I... The teachers in college, multiple of them, they use the same fingering. So I use it too. You know, it works pretty well. So there's just certain guidelines about fingering and we'll learn as we go along it says you're not always going to have finger numbers in the music you're playing just, and, and the finger numbers you get might not be the best. Hmm. Well, one of the things about the fingering that we use is when we have repeated notes, whatever, it could just be two, still repeated. If we need to, we can use the repeated notes to change hand positions to get ready for what's coming. And that's what we're learning in this lesson here. So let's look this over. It's three lines long, more or less. Treble and bass clef, one flat in the key signature. We're in the key of F major. And three, four time signature. And we got quarter notes and dotted quarter notes still. Got our old friend dotted quarter notes and dotted half notes and things. Okay. Well, let's take it one hand at a time and make sure we know what each hand is doing first. And then we'll try and put them together. So the right hand starts with third finger on C up here, and that puts you in this position. Don't forget the B flat, it's in the key signature. And it's one and two and three. Remember the dotted quarter note. The note comes on beat one, the dot comes on beat two, and so the eighth note comes on the end of two. One and two and here. And now they want you to do a three. So the first A is with thumb, and then the second one is with three. This prepares us for the next few notes coming up. That's all. We just change from this position to this position. And so we can get ready for what's coming. Now there's other fingerings we could use that are probably better than this, but this gets it across. So this idea of changing different fingers on repeated notes. Two, and then again, the Fs, thumb and then fourth finger this time, you ought to be able to go from any finger to any finger, it doesn't matter. And eventually you want to be able to get where you can do it without even looking at the keyboard. But you, you, you can, I mean you can always scratch up, put the fourth finger over it and, and you're there. Or you can lift up and move. Different ways of doing it. It depends on what mood I'm in as to what way I do it. But here you're just here this way we're in this position for all of these other notes. And the second line, one and two. And then second line going from the second major to the third. Again, two Fs, we're going up. This way we're prepared. And you lift up and move. Now there is a fingering I like better on this. So going from, this is the second line in the middle where the dotted half note is. Going from here to the next measure. I don't like that. And there's other fingers we can use to do better, but right now let's just focus on this. So we'll just stick with this and lift up and move up. And you do it again. Last line, last three measures. You're here, you reach up, you want third finger on the F. So the, the thumb is here and you just reach the hand up. And they want third finger. I see no valid reason for that other than practicing on this. So in my opinion, that last, uh, the next to the last measure when it's 5-3, in my opinion you should not do that. Stay on the 5 and just stay right there. Finish it. And the reason for that is one of the ideas of the fingering style I use is I won't move my hand around if I don't have to. Now we don't have to move here, so what's the point other than practicing the moving the hand? If you want practice at that, by all means. But 
as far as fingering goes, I would not finger that. I just use fifth on both of those. So I mean, just because it's a repeated note doesn't mean you got to use a different finger. Okay. Let's look at the left hand. You have F chord at the beginning. That's time for two measures, and then the F. And you don't need these finger numbers. Ah. Just use the fingers on the key. Second line, third measures F or B natural. That's fine. Okay, put the hands together. And then here, there, you may have to work on that. Get to where you can do that easily enough. Second line, one and two. Right hand, third finger, four and then three. So the right hand moves up, the left hand doesn't. And you do that again. Yeah. So go ahead and put the hands together and then go back through it however many times. Work on the trouble spots and get rid of the hesitations. You can keep it slow, but no hesitations. And we'll think about the articulation. Which, they don't give you any. There's no accents or slurs or nothing. So in that case, it's, we do what we want. Well, I suggest maybe we put in the phrases, the musical sentences or the musical thoughts. And to figure it out, I have to play the melody kind of quick so I can hear it, because then the thought comes out, like here. To me, that's one thought, one music, so that would be one phrase. So I would connect the first line together, and then after the line, at the end, before going to the second line, I'd lift up. Just a little lift. It's like taking a breath. You're just cutting the dotted half note a little bit short so you can go on. There, the dotted half note in the middle of the second line. Again, end of another phrase or sentence, lift up. You have to lift up to move. But it's like taking a breath. And that's sentence. Okay, so each of these dotted half notes apparently ends a sentence. So you just lift up after each one. The left hand connected all the way as best you can. In other words, at the end of the first line, when I'm here, I'm going to the second line. I want to lift up here, but not here. I'm going to connect that, but not this. I don't lift up in my left hand just because I lift it up in the right. No. And some of them, you have to lift up in the left because it's a repeated note. But if I can, I'll connect it. Then we can think about the dynamics. MF, mezzo forte, that applies to the melody. In this piece, it is in the right hand. So whatever you think moderately loud is, this needs to be in the background. Just keep it soft. So I'm a little heavier here and lighter in the left hand. Second line, you, we have a swell. A swell is when you swell up and back down. You get a little louder and then back down. Because if you see in the second line, second measure, so it'll go louder. Up to loud, because you're moderately loud. And then you stay loud until the, the dotted half note, you're going to come back down. Well, the piano does that automatically. The point is, on the next measure, when you go back, you're, you're back to moderately loud again. So you just swell up. And moderately loud again, like you were at the beginning. And then the last three measures or so, you swell up again. Right there. And then come back down. Try and get where you can feel these swells. Speed, well, in the middle. Not fast or slow, just whatever you, feels right to. to it depends on how much coffee I've had to drink. Uh.
my opinion as far as interpreting it goes. You can do other things with the dynamics. If you want to put in a little retardando at the end, put it if you feel it. Then put it in. It, it, there's nothing there. So what do you do? It's When they don't give you anything, you got free reign on how you want to interpret it. You could add staccatos if you wanted to. It's just it's up to you. Let's play this t together very slowly and double check that you have the correct notes and rhythms. I'm not going to do any dynamics, so I'm going to play it all about the same. And I'll give us three counts, uh, just, just checking notes and rhythms. One, ready and go, and one and two, and two.